Hello and welcome to the Cup of Tri Triathlon podcast. We're brought to you every week by our sponsors, OxygenAddict.com Triathlon Coaching and Fueled by Cake.com, your charity cake book. I'm joined again this week. I'm pleased to say it's been a few weeks, Helen, by my lovely co-host, Helen Murray, fresh from her amazing performance at the Ironman 70.3 in Staffordshire this weekend. Helen, how are you doing and how are your legs, mate? <laughs> I was going to say, Rob, I'm feeling a little bit sore everywhere, generally everywhere. <laughs> thighs, sore and battered, oh, are you? Sore and battered. Thighs hurt, calves hurt, arms hurt, stomach hurts. Just generally, even even the my forehead hurts from where my helmet was for like three hours. <laughs> so yeah, mm. I just general general ache. <laughs> Are you walking downstairs backwards? Is it as bad as that? No, no, it has been worse for the legs. Um, no, not that bad actually. I managed to have a little potter around Shrewsbury today, so at least I can still walk. But um, oh, yeah, nice. thankfully I didn't have to run for a train, or else that could have ended in disaster. It's not good, is it? It's a very unique feeling in the legs when you're you post Ironman or half Ironman and you've got that kind of, probably it would be worse tomorrow I seem to find, the day after the day after, you kind of have that thing where your legs collapse backwards on themselves like a, a oh. crane or a stalk or something. I, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm actually going to have a sports massage tomorrow, so hopefully. Oh God, you're not. I am. Are you really? It's just a gentle oh. one, a little one. I didn't have one post race, so I'm going to have a very gentle one tomorrow. Um, yeah, and hopefully Paul, my massage friend, um, won't be too hard. He knows his I stuff. Know. He won't be. He'll be fine. I hear the word sports massage. My my wife, Mrs. Cup of Try, she did the sports massage course a few years ago, and I just I associate it with extreme pain. <laughs> it's the, it's the only thing I ever experienced. I don't think I ever got maybe two massages off her the whole time she was training. Because it just hurt so bloody much, I couldn't take it. I was screaming like a, like I don't know what. It was it was awful. She was all elbows and you know, separating. She was like a butcher separating <laughs> the meat from the tendons and stuff. She tried to go near my Achilles tendons with her elbows, and I was like, look, that's just not going to happen. Oh, I'll limp around for a few the, days. The elbows do go in the glutes, but it's painful when it happens. Oof. But but it's so good. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like. Thanks. It's it's a similar feeling to the I don't know the, the half marathon at the end of a half Ironman in that it's horrible at the time but then you feel great afterwards it's that whole we love pain surely maybe I've maybe I've just never got through that point maybe it's just not for me maybe I need to persevere with one and, and feel but I just always feel stop now and I limp for two days I've never got through one. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm looking forward to it tomorrow, actually. Looking forward to it. Good. Well, listen, let's kick off our episode then. Let's kick it off. I did manage, while Helen was racing around at Ironman 70.3 Staffordshire, I was there with my trusty MP3 recorder. I managed to get a load of interviews from the pros as they crossed the line. So, super excited, Helen. I felt like a real professional um, the lovely crew at 70.3 Staffordshire gave me a media pass and I got in that little area at the end where all the media people were standing with their cameras and stuff and got to interview them as they crossed the line, which was awesome. So uh, upcoming interviews later on, all things being well with my editing suite. Oh, Rob, it's, it's a good place to be, isn't it? I, I have been in that area at different sporting events and, um, yeah, it is actually, you do get... A different thrill from actually racing but you still got the yeah the energy there and getting the athletes as soon as they cross the line I tell you yesterday I got a blooming camera stuck in my face so I had the treatment right back at me I couldn't even I, I now know how athletes feel as soon as they cross the line <laughs> how could you even put a sentence together I thought I was going to collapse and this guy was like how was your race I was thinking I don't, I don't really care how my race was I just I need a you, barrier I hope to you get on the telly Oh, I Honestly, <laughs> I listened back to the interviews that I did and the one I did with you and on it you can hear me talking to Rich, who's Helen's Helen's man. Um, we snuck him into the media area as well. And poor old Helen was staggering round like a drunk after she crossed the finish line. And the TV crew were on top of you, weren't they? Honestly, I couldn't believe it. How was your race? What was the course like? I was like, oh, I don't even know. I'm, I'm going to be sick now. Move out of the way. I did feel a little bit sick as I crossed that line. Yeah. But you would, you'd, yeah, your little, your little eyeballs were different sizes when you came to talk to us, mate. Your little <laughs> pinprick pupils, and I was thinking, she is going to pass out. Yeah. 
Oh dear. So listen, let's um, let's break from tradition here. Let's talk about the race itself. Let's talk about your race and the experience and all of that because 70.3 UK, really big race in the UK. It's the first really big one, I think, in this country of the year, isn't it? And I've got to say, Helen, from a spectator's point of view, I was really impressed by it. Shrugva Hall was beautiful. I was imagining being American or Spanish and coming over here to race. It looks like typical kind of picture postcard British scenery, doesn't it? Yeah, when I did go and rack, I thought, wow, this is pretty. So it's a really huge sort of estate um, in the Staffordshire countryside, um, just down the road from Cannock and things. And um, it it did have an impressive backdrop. And the actual race in terms of support, by the time you got on the run, that was incredible. Um, it was mega, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, really, the crowds were. really good. However, it was the best supported, best supported big race I've been to in twelve years of racing in this country. I think the crowds were. I think because it was so focused around. For those of you listening who weren't there, the kind of there was an out and back that went all the way around the this hall itself and back down the same road. And that's where the finish area was as well, wasn't it? So all the spectators were focused on there. They had the expo area. They had all the flags and the tents and stuff. So everyone was focused in the area, and there was loads and loads and loads of support there. It was. Uh, it had the feel of a really big event, which was awesome. Yeah, it did. And when on part of the run course, you actually left the estate and you went to through um, the local village, and again there because people in that village wouldn't really have been able to escape for the day because all of the roads around them were shut. They just came out and supported. So all the way, that was fantastic. And the volunteers on the drink stations would spot your name. And um, there was this horrible hill on the run, and they would just be yelling at everyone going through, saying, you know, keep on going, Helen, you're doing amazingly. And that was really fantastic. So, yeah, the run, in terms of support, was brilliant. The bike course wasn't great for support because it was a um, point to point 56 mile um, lots of road closures they had hoped to get uh, supporters and families and friends up to Canuck Chase which was you had to climb up towards the end of the bike leg but they had a real issue a logistics issue with the buses so a lot of supporters were left disappointed because there were no buses And then the swim, again, I'd say there were quite a lot of supporters there because of it being a point-to-point race and people would have had to have been dropped off. So, yeah, for support, the swim and the run were fantastic. Right, so let's talk about the pro race, Helen. All the big news was looking at the famous superstar Javier Gomez, wasn't it? Oh, Rob, I saw him at the very beginning in transition putting his, just doing the final touches to his bike. And you could just tell there was this air of excitement around the fact that he was racing. And I saw all of the pros getting on their bikes and leaving um, T1. And then what a race it was. I was going to say, because of course you started like an hour and a half after them, didn't you? Your start time was loads later. So did you get to sort of watch them swim and come back in and the whole deal from the side of the... I didn't see them. I didn't see them swim because at that point I thought, you know what? I don't actually fancy hanging around for an hour and a half getting cold. So I went to sit back in the car um, uh, and actually just sort of shut my eyes and get myself away from the hype and just chill out. But when I got back, they were leaving transition, and I had seen Gomez um, before the start of the race. Actually, when I was leaving transition, once it was, you know, once I had sorted my bike out, I saw him just go for a little run. Um, it was actually quite cool. He's like, wow, this guy, you know, he is such a an incredible, incredible athlete, and so much respect from from everybody. And to just have him there at a race which isn't an ITU race, which no one else can do alongside him, for example, was absolutely fantastic. And um, yeah, so I saw him get on his bike um, coming out of T1, and he just sort of thought, yep, I think he'll have this, and it won't be too problematic for him. But he didn't actually have it all his own way, did he? He didn't know. Um, there was. Uh, we were quite surprised actually because we were obviously uh, hanging around the Shrugba Hall waiting for them to get back, and the word had gone round that this German dude Marcus Tomska was in the lead, and uh, and he actually put six minutes into Gomez and Roman Guillaume together, who I, I presume were kind of riding together on the bike. Um, but he caught them and passed them and put sort of, I think he had three and a half or four minutes on them coming out of transition. So he's obviously a super biker to watch for the future. 
Um, and then Gomez came out onto the run and, uh, I can't say, he looked like he was just a different breed. He was, you know, this Marcus Tomska guy was obviously a very good runner and he was running fast, but Gomez just looked so smooth and fluid and it was all over right from the, right from the minute he came running by. The guys I was standing with were like, okay, there goes the winner then. Um, <laughs> And and he closed that three and a half minutes within the first lap. He was in the lead by the time he came through to the start of the second lap. Um, and then behind him we had uh, we had Roman Guillaume, who looked like he was running super super quick actually. But um, on the overall times, he ran a one twenty compared to Gomez's one thirteen. So he was quite a long way off the pace of Gomez. Um, and Will Clark got fourth he ran a 115 40 so he was running super fast as well but again he's he's got that kind of really relaxed running style and he didn't look as though he was running fast as as Roman Guillaume so uh, Will Clark ran him down and I think was about a minute and a half behind him at the finish so the overall positions ended up Gomez took it out in 402 then Marcus Tomska in 407 Roman Guillaume from France in 409 Will Clark was fourth and then we had some great results from more British pros behind that. We had Oliver Simon. Um, he came in in 4.20 in 7th. Stephen Harrison in 4.22 in 8th. And um, and then a whole host of age groupers coming through as well. So uh, hats off to Chris Standage, who races for the Talk team. He was the first age grouper through overall. Um, race with the 35 plus age group and he was 10th overall he was in and amongst the pros and he did a 424 so uh, that really that is, is impressive. yeah stellar performance right in amongst the back end of the pros there and only really a couple of minutes away from finishing 6th or 7th overall wow. so um, he tweeted afterwards you know it's one of those days where everything went perfectly and, and this kind of day only comes along once in a lifetime Um but super impressed with him. He came off the bike, and uh, I've known Chris for a few years, and he just looked awesome. He was running really, really fast, and looked like he was just on one of those days where everything was going right for him. So, uh, so yeah, hats off to you, Mr. Standards. You're getting our age grouper of the week award there, no question. Uh, then over into the ladies' results. Yeah, well, this was one almighty impressive show from Lucy Gossage, who um, overall won it. 10 minutes clear of um, of her friend, actually, her good friend, Susie Cheatham. So Lucy Gossage won it in 431 and then Susie Cheatham did a 441, and then it was Sam Warriner finishing off the podium in 446. But um, it was incredible because Lucy Gossage was not first out of the water. Um, Georgie Rutherford was up there in terms of being one of the fastest swimmers. Um, and Lucy Gothage came out, I think, about two minutes down out of the water. So had a fair bit of work to do on the bike, but boy, did she do that. And then um, I know, Rob, that you're aware that a few of them punctured as well, didn't they? A few of the girls. Yeah, there was um, there was a couple we were talking to afterwards. I think uh, Eva Wooty from she had, from Austria or Germany, um, she totally blown a tire out and couldn't continue. And also, Amy who else was Amy Forshaw was another one who we managed to grab an interview with her at the end. Um, and she was with I think she was with her mum and dad, and they had a um, a thumbtack or a drawing pin that someone had. had chucked on the road or it had fallen on the road and it was in her tyre so um, she was super cool actually she was just like it's one of those things and you get on with it and you race as hard as you can but it obviously it had ended her race who else was it that had punctured who was it Susie Cheetah yeah she had a puncture 4k out didn't she from the from the end of the bike but That's she managed right. to fix yeah. it um, she fixed it and got herself back into the bike yeah and she's uh, a super duper runner so she did amazingly to have a puncture and still get a second on the podium brilliant she sure was. And then we had, let's see, overall, fifth place, El Hersine. Yep. Sixth place, Nikki Bartlett, yeah, both on the show. Yeah, Nikki Bartlett, her first race as a pro, so she was really, really pleased with that one. She certainly was. Um, and again, we've got to take our hats off here to a couple of super age group performances here. First age group overall was Jill Fullen, and she'd have placed herself, if my maths is right, she'd have got fifth in the pro race. So Jill Fullen coming in in 4.51, super performance. And Rob, just, just to let everybody know, which age group does Jill Fullen compete in? It's not written here. Which one is it? Uh, I'm sure it's 50 to 54. Oh, my. Really? Yep. <clears throat> yep. That's unreal. Yes. She is amazing. 
that we've got to get her on the show. It's <laughs> definitely, honestly. She... Everybody knows Jill. Got contact details? Please Twitter them through to us. That'd be awesome. She's over fifty. Because I saw, I saw her on the run. Because obviously she would have started um, around about the same time as Mark, well, probably ten minutes ahead of me. Literally, yeah. she just flew. <laughs> she flew past, and I think all these blokes were just like, "What the hell?" Um, yes, <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, That's so. amazing, isn't it? And there's also the other age group I was going to mention was Claire Han, who I believe took out your age group, didn't she? Yeah, yep. Yeah, she was. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, she did actually. She did a. Didn't she do something amazing? Like under twenty? Was it around a twenty-six minute swim? Yeah, twenty-six thirty on the swim. So right up there with the pros. That's uh, pretty amazing. Yep, uh, uh, Rob, confirmation. Uh, Jill Fullen is definitely in that 50 to 54 age group. <laughs> wow, that's incredible, isn't it? Be inspired. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Good work, Jill. Very impressive. And I think she won her <laughs> age group as well, which clearly is no surprise by this point, at Mallorca recently. It's a half Ironman there. Wow, amazing performances from her. That is, that is pretty amazing. Now, the... Um, the most interesting thing for me was on the day the number of British pro women who were racing and it really added to a kind of British feel to the day, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. Because you had so Lucy Gossage, Susie Cheatham, yeah, Ellie Hairsign, Georgie Rutherford, um Alice Hector was racing, Nikki Bartlett, Vicky Gill, like all of these girls who quite a few of them have turned pro fairly recently as well. Amy Forshaw too you know, and to see them have such an amazing, like, high-profile race as well that they can compete in, it just shows the strength of the sport. Clearly, we have a few other British-based female pros. Um, sorry, I don't mean that. I mean Brit- British. British pros who are based, based abroad. Abroad, exactly. So the likes of um, Rachel Joyce and Leander Cave and, you know, some of those ones who... Who at this time, like, why would they come back and, and race UK 70.3 if they're living in the States? They wouldn't. So it's brilliant that we can have such amazing races over here that all our British girls can compete in. And they clearly spur each other on and they clearly have a lot of banter between them all because um, they were doing, like, dancing in the warm-up area and things like that. And they're already um, talking about how uh, Ironman UK... Paul Kay, who does all the announcing, is going to have to get a few tunes on for them. So it, it's really quite fun. Good stuff. Lost you there for a minute. Are you back there, I'm Helen? Back. I'm back. Good. We had a crappy line there for a minute, but you're back. So, yeah, you were saying really good banter amongst the pros. Um, and they're all going to be racing at Ironman UK in five weeks' time. So uh, that's going to be brilliant, isn't it? It's going to be really good. And we're going to be there as well, aren't we? We are going to be there. Really, really excited about that. It's going to be one of my favourite race days of the year to get up to Bolton and watch the racing go on there. Um, yeah, great stuff. Right, let's move on. Come on, other exciting things have happened this weekend. Um, let's talk about the European Games, Helen. Oh, Baku. So, um, yeah, incredible performance by Gordon Benson to win the mail race for GB and secure a position a place at the Rio Olympics for Great Britain but it's it wasn't just him he was racing with Tom Bishop and Phil Graves and the three of them worked their backsides off Tom Bishop and Phil Graves to get Gordon in that position so then he could run and take the gold medal yeah, it, it looks like I've read a great report here by John Levinson on uh, Try 24-7, and he's just said the boys buried themselves on the bike to set him up for the win. Um, and it's it's an interesting kind of dry run for the Olympics kind of deal going on in my head here. I'm thinking these guys are basically putting their marker down to say, I can ride extremely hard and put the kind of moves on here that are going to set us up for for two medals on the men's side. And it's hard to see beyond Phil Graves for that for that slot. If he stays fit and stays in shape, it's very very difficult to see beyond him for that third slot at the minute, isn't it? Well, or would they go for would they actually opt for Gordon Benson, who can you know who who could, who's just proven that he can win a, a race as of- well and he could do the work on the bike for the brownies who knows Mm, 
Be interesting to see what they do. My yeah. gut says it's going to be Phil Graves. My gut says it's yeah. that they're going to. Yeah, I think they are. Don't forget all the funding sits on it. If they win medals, they get millions of pounds worth of funding for the whole of the BTF. Um, and as much as we have the kind of Corinthian ideal of the best athletes going, mm. there's no there's no question in my mind that Olympic racing triathlon at the moment is a team event, yeah. and they're going to race as a team, and they're going to do everything they can to put their you know, if it was only one Brownlee there, then you might be talking a different, a different race. But I still think even, even if Ali or Johnny got injured, my gut says they would put two extremely strong swim bikers in to support one medal chance rather than somebody else. Now I might be wrong, yeah. but well, we'll see. It's interesting, but with you know, Phil Grape is an awesome time trialer on the bike, and that is what would get. Yeah, he's a brilliant swimmer as well, but. The fact that yeah. he can... that's the thing. He's a world-class time trialist yeah. who's also a front-pack swimmer, and the combination of that is extremely rare, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So that is going to be, as we keep on saying, it's just going to be brilliant. <laughs> <See you. laughs> yeah, so it's going to be very, very interesting. And then, Rob, we should mention as well, uh, Nick was very winning the women's race by... She just had an amazing gap and just shows what a phenomenal athlete she still is. So it was her, Lisa Norden... And uh, one other athlete, the three of them just broke away, and it was just between them. So I don't think it was the most exciting of races once that breakaway had happened, um, yeah. compared to the men's race, which it was almost like everything was in it because you had the chasing guys running Gordon Benson down. Um, I don't know. It's, it's uh, quite an interesting concept. And apparently the start in Baku was uh, um, it takes a while for the water to get deep enough. So they almost had like an 80-meter run out. To, to where the water was. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, quite a bit. Wow, yeah. exciting times. I know. I, I could know. do that bit. I'm quite good at running through water. <laughs> if they have if they the have one of those bit. ones where, like, 1,500 metres of running through water, I'd be right on it, mate. <laughs> do you know, there's a story from the very first Ironman, or is it the second Ironman in Hawaii, where they had to, it must be the second one, where they had to move the swim into one of the channels because the swell was too big to swim in and one of the competitors allegedly walked the swim in the shallows up and down <laughs> I could yeah I could imagine that happening I think I Probably told you in still go faster than me swimming well in Monterey in Mexico that race the water there is 1.2 meters deep so I remember saying people were standing up in the middle of it <laughs> love it and, and they did say you will get I don't know, red card or whatever, if you walk um, through the water. But yeah, there were dolphin dive yeah. the whole way. <laughs> yeah, but there were a few people, you know, standing up, looking at their watches. Um, <laughs> there was another good result over the weekend, Rob, um, at the Italy 70.3. Vanessa Raw won her first Ironman 70.3 um, in 4.38.13. So she was ahead of uh, Lisa, the Austrian Huertala, and Erica Cosmo as well. So congratulations there to Vanessa Raw. Well done. That's brilliant. And we've got her lined up for an interview over the next couple of weeks as well, if we can make the schedules work. We've had a few emails back and forth, um, which I can't tell you how amused Mrs. Cup of Try was when she saw that in my inbox. Who's Vanessa Raw? Why is she sending you emails? Who's she? <laughs> <laughs> of course, the little, the little picture pops up, doesn't it, at the side of the, the side oh. of the email at Gmail? Why is Vanessa Raw emailing you? It's like, uh, I don't think you've got anything to worry about, dear. <laughs> God bless her. Oh dear, right, I am Mike Cairns. A... Yeah, Luke Mackenzie. Yeah, Luke Mackenzie got that one, didn't he? Another win for Luke McKenzie, taking it down over Cameron Brown and Dylan McNeese in third. Women's side, we had Liz Blatchford, who we kind of claim as, as UK, but she appears to be racing for the Australians again. Uh, she won that in 9-11, so really good to see her injury-free again. I think she could be, you know, possible dark horse for Kona, Helen. Well, She's she had, had a couple of good under-the-radar results there, hasn't she? Well, her debut year, that was a very, very successful um, debut there. Didn't she get third? Was it fourth? Third or fourth, yep. yeah, she got. Yep, and then this year just gone, she, I think she got more like tenth. Yeah. Yeah, and she wasn't too happy with that. Um, but yeah, I think if she remains, you know, in, in decent form and, and injuries not 
isn't affected by injury, then, yeah, she is a good shout for a, a decent um, possible podium uh, again. Possible podium there. But we only want her to get one if she's racing for GB. Which she isn't. She has very much switched to back to Australia. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Um, and one other result, the Windsor Triathlon. Uh, Stu Hayes took out the overall at the Windsor Triathlon, racing from the very last wave in the what they called the Race the Legends wave, apparently. <laughs> uh, Stu's 35 now, and um, him and Richard Stannard apparently showed the young boys a thing or two on the swim, swam away from Dan Hawksworth, believe it or not, gapped him, and then Stu Hayes put a 56-minute bike leg in and then held Hawkey off on the run to take the overall win. So uh, very impressive performance from him, and Richard Stannard held on for third, and he's been going for a while, hasn't he? He's a he's a really good example of someone who's stayed in really really good shape as he gets older and hasn't really got any slower. So uh, he's he was complaining in the post race interviews that he was going to see how his body held up this season before he decided whether to continue. But he's been racing pro for ages, oh, as long as I can remember. He was winning stuff back in 2002 when he had the first half Ironman UK. So. Long career. That is that's dedication, isn't it, to keep on going for that long? It's a bit like Leighton Hewitt on the grass <laughs> of yeah. tennis. He keeps on coming back for more. I think this keeps Queens is his more. final one. But um, yeah, to be able to race at such a high level and compete at such a high level uh, and keep your body oh, still still working essentially after battering it for many many years that's really really good going um rob there was one other race a uh, big race this weekend which was blenheim uh, and that was won by chris perham uh head of matthew yeah. wright and morgan davis they're all lost for teammates uh india lee won the women's race ahead of sophie caldwell and natalie milne the dates for Leeds for the leg of the ITU have been confirmed, so it's going to be June the 11th and June the 12th next year. June the 11th and June the 12th, that is going to be, that's surely not going to be the same weekend as Staffordshire next year, is it? Wow, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, you'd think not. Because it is, it's the same weekend, but, well, oh, crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Some, some better tweet Ironman UK, hadn't they? Wow. Well, Gomez won't be uh, returning then, will he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It'd be it'd be great to see him, wouldn't it? Yeah. Great to see him racing here again. Whether he will or not, now he's found out it's not flat and fast. Yeah. We'll have to see. Right, listen, let's tie this episode up here, Helen. I'm going to let you go and get on with your recovery and prepare for your sports massage. Coming up now... Um, editing permitting, we're going to run you through some of the little interviews that we managed to get of the professional athletes coming across the finish line. So uh, hopefully these will run back to back. Hopefully they're going to sound okay and they'll give you a bit of a feel for the event. If you were there at the event this weekend, we'd love to hear from you and hear what your thoughts were. So give us a tweet over on at Cup of Try or drop us a line on the Facebook page. Um, and Enjoy the interviews. Until next week, you've been listening to the Cup of Tribe podcast. I'm Coach Rob Wilby. And I'm Helen Murray. And thanks for joining us and enjoy the interviews. Speak to you again soon. All right. Lucy, well done. A great Wednesday. How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty pleased. <laughs> yeah, really pleased. You look like you're absolutely flying on the run. Yeah, I, I was quite relaxed. I knew that. I just had to film. I knew I didn't have to run that hard, so it's, yeah, it makes it a lot easier it's to relax. Controlled, was it? Yeah. It was, um, it was second, I think, coming in now. Um, yeah, no, I had a, I had a great day. <laughs> good. How did you find the course? Really good. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, tough bike, and yeah, the run's beautiful. Really beautiful. It's a stunning estate round here, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely beautiful round, and the support everywhere was um, was incredible. Yeah. And I think we have our second place lady there, don't we? Yes, Susie she's 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 as well. my landlady. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't know that. Thanks for the interview. <laughs> Susie, congratulations. Tell us about your race today. Um, yeah, it was it, it was it was fine. <laughs> um, I am um, I'm quite proud of it actually because I should I, hope so. Yeah, definitely. Well, I I I've had a a rough few couple of weeks. Um, uh, various things, but um. I, I didn't come into it, you know, it was, it was a focus race for me, 
it didn't come into it as well as I had expected to. Um, but, and then in the race, I think to be honest, my bike was very average, but then I punctured at 86Ks. Yeah, now someone was telling me that, that you, that you got picked up on the bike. And... Yeah, so I, I mean, Gossam is incredibly strong on the bike. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I would have beaten her anyway, to be honest. Um, but all the girls that I'd worked so hard to drop, like right at the beginning, at the beginning down at Chasewater, caught me back up, overtook me. And I, I mean, it was a proper blowout and I thought, uh, game over. Game over. Game over with four Ks to go on the bike. It's quite frustrating. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I managed to pull it back, which I, I'm quite proud of for getting back into the race, having a puncture. And I'm I'm a bit lazy with mechanics. Like my husband is a great mechanic and does I most see. of my mechanics. Yeah. So I think he was super did excited you change it that or I did managed to get a wheel. Uh, no, no, I changed it. I changed it. Well my... done. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. So how long do you reckon it caught you? I'm so you? proud of it. No, I'd be the same, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> well, to be honest, if I had had a pit stop, it would have been game over. I mean, yeah. both myself and Eva Woody had a puncture. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a shame because there is gravel everywhere. Like, I, it breaks it, your heart on a, on a big was, race when it happens. It was going to happen to somebody. And we said before the race, one of us is going to get a puncture. But, you know, like, I think myself, Lucy and Eva both all thought that we were sort of contenders, yeah. the main contenders for the podium. And, over to Eva and I thought it's a, it's a shame because if I come second now it's not a fair second right. um, because she's got she's got a puncture and then <laughs> with four k's to go I get the same so I feel like it was a fair second <laughs> um, but Can't yeah, say no. fair than that, can yeah you? exactly but I mean yeah it t- take nothing away from the fact that you know, boss boss is much stronger than me today regardless of whether I yeah. whether I punch it or not so yeah very, very good of you, I think. <laughs> well, good sportsmanship. Good very British sportsmanship. She's very Listen, strong. Thank you very much for your time. No and well done. No Nikki, well done. You finished, is it sixth you overall, fifth overall? Good. I actually don't know. I don't know. You're in there somewhere, aren't you? I think a great race from Victoria Hill. Yeah, six points. Right. Right. And Nikki was our first ever interview on the Cup of Chai way back when, six months ago. And it's your first pro race today. So how'd it go? Yeah, it was all right. I had a stupid little panic in the swim, so I lost everyone. And then, to be honest, the bike was no man's land. I don't think I saw, I didn't see any females. Um, <laughs> so you're kind of like in a land of, am I catching? Am I just losing time? And then, just trying to chase down people on the run. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, today was just about getting experience. A tough field, like, to come do the first pro race. With. What a baptism of fire for your first pro race. Yeah, I know. So. Like, yeah, I looked at the start list, I was like, oh, just going out and learn from the best, I guess. <laughs> yeah. so it just shows the depth of British women in, in yeah. triathlon, it's amazing. I was talking with a spectator and they were going, these are all British girls that are coming through, this is amazing, yeah. so the strength and depth is incredible, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's amazing and it's, it's so good to, for me just starting out um, to look up to these girls and see, yeah. just learn from them, I guess. <laughs> well, you remember us little people when you're, when you're winning the big races next year, all right. I'm going to let you go because you've literally just crossed the finish line, going to have a lie down somewhere. Yeah. Thanks very much. Right, we've got Elle hair sign here. Oh, so, right, Elle, you don't have to wipe your face because we're on radio. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through your race. Well, I had a nice little swim. I was so happy not to be in the sea this time. Nice, yeah. I had yeah. last few races in the sea and I got lost last time in the oh, It breaks your so, heart, um, doesn't it? Yeah, so um, the pack went out pretty hard at all the ITU girls painting it off the front. So I ended up in no man's land, but when I got to the end, I saw it was only uh, just Lucy was just ahead, so I thought oh, maybe it's okay. Yeah, good. And um, I love the bike course, like that undulating, bit of technical, bit of flat, nice mix. Not having a great day to be honest, and you're all on your own, so you're like, oh, what's going on? It's a bit lonely out there. A bit lonely, but then um, I caught Jackie Slack on the the climb onto Panic Chase, and saw Sam Warren um, just coming off that loop. So I thought, oh, you know, you're still in the mix, just keep, just keep trucking along. And um, yeah, run side off a bit arduous, but I kind of built into it. Last lap, Nikki Bartlett caught me. So I thought, oh, I'm going to try and stick with you. So we ran neck and neck all the way up that hill in the village, all the way down the hill, all the way onto the off road. And just half around the off road, I thought, oh, I'm going to go. So I went. Managed to hold her off. So yeah, I'm, that's I'm well good. Fifth place, actually. That's brilliant. A real breakthrough race, isn't it? Yeah, it's just. I mean, I've not, I've not been on top form recently. A bit of fatigue and grumpy lower back and a few things to sort out. But I'm just pleased I 
kind of turn that race round and yeah. finish strong. So well done for you yeah, for battling all the way through, yeah. and it just shows, doesn't it, to keep, yeah. keep digging right till the end. And the sport's amazing, isn't it? Really, like it keeps you going when you know so many people on the course. Like yeah. that's uh, yeah, it's great. So Bolton next. Great so stuff. Need a little rest now. Yeah, you're going to put your feet up, you've earned it, mate, and we'll see I you will. on the course at Bolton. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Are you filming it? Or? No, no I'm it's going to say it's MP3. <laughs> so, Amy, welcome to the Cup of Tri podcast. Tell us about your race today. Um, yeah, well, unfortunately, I got a puncture out on the bike. And Just I'm, been showing me. It yeah. looks a little bit suspicious, that, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's coming down a scent, which is dangerous as well. Oh, God, that's annoying. awful, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I thought the swim went well. Um, I was in the middle when I came out of the, um, of the girls. Um, yeah, I felt like until I got the bike was okay. And then after that, I just thought, what have I got to lose? I'm just going to yeah. put the hammer down. It looked like you were flying on the run. Yeah. You were, the crowd were going, look at this girl <laughs> come by. This is amazing. <laughs> I, did, I did feel good on the run, I must say. Um, but I just thought, I'm not going to anything to lose. Just, you know, go for it and see what yeah. happens. Yeah, it's a shame because I lost about 10 minutes. I'm not very good at mending punches, so you can imagine. It's hard in a race, though, isn't it? Yeah. When something like that happens. Yeah. The most important thing, though, is it looks like you didn't lose your head. You looked totally chilled, and yeah. it was a kind of, yeah. I've got nothing to lose, I'll yeah. just run hard kind of deal, was it, after that? Yeah, definitely. So. What a shame. And what's next yeah. for you? Um, I've got the ITU long course in two weeks in Sweden. I'm doing that with Joe Skipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that should be fun. Um, and then after that, I've got I'm on, um, I'm on I'm UK, UK as well. And then Wales after that. Brilliant. Well, we should see yeah. you on the course at I'm on UK then. Cool. It's going to be a great battle there. There's loads of loads of British ladies racing yeah. in that one, aren't there? Well, this one, I mean, in terms of British ladies, it was a good race. So, so deep. It was yeah. there was 15 or 16 really good names yeah. there. We're thinking this is great and it's brilliant for British triathlon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, I look forward to doing it next year. Uh, it was a really good course. So. Yeah, yeah, everyone seems to have really enjoyed it. Well, listen, I'll let you yeah. go and have a lie down. Thank Thanks you. very much for your time. <laughs> to look like a real journalist. <laughs> right, Alice Hector, welcome to the Cup of Tribe podcast. Tell us about your race today. Um, it was more of a training race, was, was the plan. Um, I've had, coming back from a bit of an injury, so the plan was to swim hard and bike, bike solid, um, and start the run um, and see how it went, um, but definitely not to finish the run because right. it would have taken too much out of, yeah. out of me on the on the comeback um so yeah it all went all went nice and solid where'd you come planned. out of the water i, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> i was quite well so many there. You are. In, <laughs> i think it was within 40 seconds of the lead which is i'm getting closer awesome. every time yeah, that's but, i mean great. there were no super super star swimmers there today so sure. i was hoping to be quite close so and then you're off done. the bike with let's think it was sam warren i yes. got all excited when you came yeah. from yeah. sam warren there was somebody else yeah susie susie cheatham susie cheatham was there with you as well she did come past in the early stages um she had a puncher right so oh, she okay. joined us in a lay by just see. before the finish <laughs> um so yeah i mean she was my she was one of my tips to i, I i'd have backed her to win today actually I see. so i don't know how much the puncher cost her yeah but i think she's still i think she's still in second right um, i've been to see how it plays out. yeah yeah and you mentioned you injured your back what is it yeah. you did in the american races Oh, I, I think I think just I, I went over a pothole um, and the really? handlebars on my bike went down. Oh. I didn't really notice at the time, but I remember feeling very stiff. And it's just a, it's just a, a cycle of destruction <laughs> from then on, really, isn't it? Yeah. So then you get off the bike and you run, and you, my calves like to seized up, and and then you think it's your calves, yeah. but actually it was the sciatic nerve that was causing things to just freeze. Yeah. Um, so we finally got it diagnosed you know my physio is really good so he had it you know diagnosed very quickly but now it's sort of treating it and trying to find a a bike position that works and and all that kind of stuff so (laughs) so what's next i guess is it all down to the rehab from the injury essentially yeah yeah but i mean it's i'm I'm back running and training but just slowly um and then just keeping the back eased off as much as possible um yeah so ironman uk and ironman wales is the the big aims so this is why i needed to be careful today and absolutely and err on the side of caution unfortunately (laughs) well five weeks to go we wish you all the best with your recovery should be good for that yeah yeah Yeah. thank you can we get a quick interview with you just for one minute how was your race today javier yeah it was good pretty tough race tough course tough bike tough run but i felt quite good and i uh, did the job so very happy you looked absolutely awesome out there on the run did you enjoy racing in england yeah of course uh, luckily the weather was much better than yesterday 
a bit chilly but a good temperature for racing and uh, yeah I did enjoy it and uh, someone told me it was a flat course a few weeks ago but it wasn't flat at all but I know there's no uh, way that course no, is flat is no, there? I know but it was a good race for me I think uh, yes. I enjoy more this type of courses than when it's totally flat so yeah it was a great event fantastic and what's next for you now this year oh uh, now I keep training in my next big race the European Championships in uh, four weeks and then uh, the next race of the World Series uh, IT World Series in Hamburg and the rest of them and are you enjoying racing these 70.3s as much as the, the Olympic distance stuff yes it's also a different thing you know uh, I like to do both I've been doing ITU for I don't know 10 12 years so yeah. at this point of my career it's good to do something different as well and keep myself motivated absolutely well we were looking forward to seeing you race the Brownlees over 70.3 in a few years when they step up as well so oh, they can stay in ITU for many <laughs> many years yeah, they are, they are really tough to be and great rivals and uh, yeah, I guess one day we'll, we'll be racing 70.3 together. And now listen, here's a big question, are you going to go to Kona? Uh, yeah, well, one point, I don't know when. But Come not, on, give us an answer when, is uh, it this year or next year? No, well, definitely not before Olympics, uh, not okay. before Rio, so probably 2017, maybe, yeah. we'll see. Good. Well, we can't wait to see that, listen, thank you very much for your yeah. time. Roman Guillaume, welcome to the Cup of Tries for iPhone podcast, how was your race today? Yeah, it was good. I'm pretty happy about this race. I had a solid block, training block the last couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, so when I, I came here, I didn't know exactly how, how would be the race for me. Because I'm, I'm training for Ironman Nice in two weeks. Okay. But the, the swim was okay. The bike was... I had a good bike. Not, not, not a very great, great bike, but my bike was good. And uh, compared to last year, I improved my run. And it's the first time I, I, I'm able to run fast and fast. Yeah, not not so fast compared to Javier Gomez. <laughs> fast and quite comfortable. Yeah. I, uh, I'm a bit tired, so I'm not able to push very deep in in, in me. Yeah. But I, I was able to run constantly, so it, it was. I'm happy. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's good. I'm and you looked really strong on the run. As we, as you were running by every lap, the, the guys I was standing with were saying, "Wow, look at him go, man! He's awesome." Uh, it's just because I'm, I have small legs, <laughs> <laughs> so I turn more my legs. <laughs> so you have hopes, right, my niece? Yeah. It'd be good to win that race. Uh, I would try. I would try. Yeah, it's the main objective. I'm training for for uh, six months, seven months now. Yeah. The last Ironman I did was Bristolton in early December last year. Okay. And since January we are first we worked on my run to be more strong on the on the run because it was my slowest part. Yeah. And. Uh, in the beginning of this year, I didn't show that I improved my run. Uh, for some reason, I had the, I was sick at the beginning of the season, uh, just flu. And uh, then I had uh, the iron too low, I had to stop a few days. And, uh, and now I'm happy, and uh, that gives me some confidence. Even I, I didn't win today, but it's like a, it's kind of a small victory for me to, yeah. to, to know that, yeah, I, I worked on my run and I ran him better. So. Oh, well, listen, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, I wish you all the best for Nice, and we look forward to seeing you running that fast along yeah. the, the shores of Nice in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. Th Take oh, care of yourself. You. Will Clark, welcome to the Cup of Tri Triathlon podcast. Tell us about your race today. Yeah, it was. Um, from, no, I wasn't I wasn't happy with it. I was, I was, I was hating the bike ride. Too. Really? Um, and, yeah, I just. I felt. I felt I, did, I wasn't too bad, I wasn't as bad as my first race of the year, but I was um, lacking a bit of power and uh, a bit of motivation to be honest after after the Ironman a, a few weeks ago. So Yeah, as long as Rotti wasn't it you just did there? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I did that and um, obviously I'm obviously not fully recovered or either that or I'm a bit under trained. Yeah, so, sure. Um, did you ride with... Um, I didn't ride anyone really. Yes, you were on your own the whole way, were you? Yeah. yeah, it was a bit of a lonely ride. Um, yeah. No, I, the course was so rough, to be honest, that my, 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 I, spent, I spent half the time trying to keep my Garmin on my bike. A lot of the guys were saying the bike, corners and are rough and there's you know, sharp corners after descents and things like yeah, that. So. Just riding in time just messes it all up. And yeah. I just... but I'll tell you what, man, positives, your run looked really good. You looked like you were running really, really well today. Is that how it felt? Yeah, I, w I was running today, so 
so that's good. I, I think I was moving. Um, yeah, I just couldn't quite close the gap on the, on the first guys, and it was a bit. There's so many people on the course giving me splits, but they're all uh, they're all different splits. So it just, <laughs> I hate it. I, I know. I, I almost had a go at my wife and said, "Give me, give me proper yeah. information, please." <laughs> How hard is it? It must break your heart because everyone's starting to watch and giving you different times all the time. Yeah, it doesn't head in, but oh, I, because I, I rely on those splits too. Yeah. You know, to try and catch, but yeah, of course. But yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is. So what's next for you? Uh, I think I'm racing Norway 7.3, uh, okay. and then after that I'll make a decision on racing Ironman UK because the plan was I'll only race Ironman UK if, if I do a decent decent race in Norway because then I'm, I'm on shape to maybe qualify for Kona. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If not, I'm just going to focus on the same point because I'm not... You've got to come and race in Bolton. That's near where we live. You've maybe. got to come up and yeah. race the Hamilton Race. Moment. Moment. That'll suit you. Yeah. How to wait course and... Yeah. Um, yeah, I need to I need to get get my shit together at the moment though because I'm, I'm a little bit I'm, I'm, I'm having a really bad year so far so okay. I've got a bit of sorting out sorting out to do so last thing I want to do is is do an Ironman with the sort of legs like I had today yeah. so yeah, yeah understandable I won't enjoy well. it well take a few days before you make a decision man you've just yeah. finished the race thanks very much for Thank your time you. right we've got Chris Standage here second place in the is it male 30 to 34 or are you over 34 now no I'm over 34 so uh, oh, yeah. is that the age group win uh, it looks like it yeah fantastic mate yeah. that's brilliant and I think possibly second place or maybe first place overall in terms of the overall age group race as well mate it's going to be right up there haven't you yeah I think we'll have to wait and see won't we I mean obviously the 30 34 I think I'm, uh, I'm first place, but yeah, there might be some class guys in that 18 to 29 age group, even like the 40 age group sometimes. There's some yeah. class guys, so uh, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. But How I'm was your race today race. overall? Um, good swim. Um, obviously from a swim background and uh, out first, and then uh, yeah, I was surprised about how many of the 30 to 34 the wave in front I had overtaken as well. So. One of the areas I was a little bit worried about was the uh, the single track road, yeah. um, you know, as you're overtaking people, but it already thinned out quite a bit, so um, you know, I was able to get through there safely and, uh, you know, get into a good rhythm, really, and, uh, you know, the bike went well, I felt strong throughout, um, and the run... Was, was 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 a solid performance, but nothing spectacular. And those last three or four miles are always the same, aren't they? So uh, you're just dying for the finish. So, uh, uh, but yeah, delighted overall. Good. And did you manage to get uh, get passed by Gomez when you were out there, or did you avoid that one? Uh, I managed to avoid that. I managed, uh, Will Clark came past me on uh, on his lap two, to my lap one. So uh, and he looked like he was moving a little bit. So uh, uh, God only knows what Gomez was doing. <laughs> Listen, man, thanks very much for your time. We're going to go let you lie down now. You look like you could do a little bit of a rest. Cheers, Rob. Take care of yourself. Cheers Bye. now. Okay, so this is this is Rob here. We're live by the side of the course. We're very excited because we're watching Helen race here. She's currently in third place in her age group, and she's 45 seconds down on the two girls who are pretty much side-by-side side leading their age group. So we're standing on the part of the out and back of the loop where hopefully... We should see Helen come back around in a few minutes time so gotta say co-host Helen running super super fast I'm here with our wonderful husband-to-be Rich how you feeling Rich nervous but excited Rob <laughs> right we're gonna sit here man and we're gonna see what happens as she comes around we will click back on in a few minutes and update you couple of trial listeners Right, so Helen's just back through the out and back there. We think she's cut the lead down to 30 seconds. But here's the thing, the track is playing up and we can't be sure whether the lady she's chasing down is in first or in second. So Helen's currently, she's just lopped off 15 seconds in about five minutes there. So she's in the hunt for passing that lady. But we don't know whether that's the pass for second or the pass for the lead. Join us again in a minute for another update. So Helen, so Helen's just crossed the finish line. There she is now, 50 yards short of the win. What an epic battle for Helen. Oh, I wish we had film of this now for you. Podcasting doesn't do it justice. God bless her, she's doubled over. Don't put the medal around her neck now. She's gonna fall over and collapse. Gets the barriers, Helen, gets the barriers. She's been interviewed for TV. Good girl. She's natural, natural for the media. 
Good effort. Hello, Helen. I wish we had video right now, darling. Helen is bent over the railings, one forearm on the railings. You ran yourself into the ground there, didn't you? I feel a bit thick. Yeah. Come on, throw up on, on tape for us. <laughs> Great race. Um, yeah, I, it was good that you had said where she was, and I got to within about eight seconds of her at one point. But then um, she pulled away, and I literally yeah, didn't have anything left. So. 50 yards in, it's at the finish. You yeah. cross the line, just shoot yeah. around the corner. I didn't, up until you said where I was, I literally didn't have a clue. So it was good that you said. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I think you were third or fourth. I think it was third or fourth overall. In the Yeah, we thought she was leading and you were going to take the lead, but then we just checked and we think there's two in front. We think you're fourth, unfortunately. But hey ho, we've given it a go. How'd you feel? Uh, and a little bit rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that was hard. That was really hard. You had a really good bite to play. Did I? Really? It was um, hard work. My legs feel like jelly. Thank you very much. But, um, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Did you have your game with? Yeah. And Lucy got it? Lucy got it. Yeah. And my predictions. Mm. Both of them made it look very, very good. So there we have it. That's the rest of all our interviews all uh, all tied up together there. Now just to clear up a few things, Chris Standage, who we interviewed towards the end there, did actually win the overall age group race as well as winning his age group. And all the excitement that Rich and I had listening to Helen or watching Helen racing along... Unfortunately, we were misled by the tracker. We thought during all of that talking that Helen was racing for the age group win there. Um, she was actually racing for third place. So uh, so fair play to the young lady in front of her. She held Helen off um, right to the very end. Helen was absolutely spent at the finish. But uh, it just goes to show what amazing racing we can have. So listen, just want to say thanks to everybody for taking the time for being interviewed for us. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, you've been listening to the Cup of Tri Triathlon podcast. I'm Coach Rob Wilby, and that was Helen Murray. And I hope you join us again next week for more triathlon fun and games. Bye now. <laughs>